Welcome to the podcast where you eavesdrop into conversations between my friends and I on a weekly basis. My name is Lily Jo, I'm a singer, songwriter and I perform shows all over the world. I'm a qualified counsellor and an emotional well-being coach. You can also check out my award-winning online mental health resource, The Lily Jo Project. I know you will find gems of wisdom within the conversations that I have with my friends. Hopefully you will find tools and resources that you can hold on to, try and test for yourself all around the important subject of mental health and personal development. I am so pleased to welcome you to today's episode of Eavesdrop. Dominica is a designer who has been in the industry for 11 years. She manages the home and design teams for Kath Kidston. In this episode, we talk about working hard to achieve your goals and dreams and the importance of self-care for emotional well-being. Grab a brew, stay tuned, you're welcome to Eavesdrop. So I'm here in London with Dominika Dudziak. Yes, that's correct. I've said your name wrong. It's a beautiful name. And um, (laughs) Dominika and I, we met a couple of weeks ago, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's right. At the Fagan Foundation launch. We were both speaking on a panel Mm -hmm. about the power of creativity. And I absolutely loved what Dominika had to say. So I thought I had to get her on the podcast for you guys. (laughs) So you guys can learn from this amazingly talented, beautiful woman inside and out so tell the listeners who you are and what you do okay so my name's Dominica and I am a designer I've been kind of in the industry for 11 years now wow. since graduating from Brighton University and I'm currently at a company called Kath Kidston yeah. and I manage the home and the kids print design teams so, so cool. yeah it's so very creative we role. had a it's funny fun. yeah yeah, we had a fun moment, didn't we, when we first met? Where... Yes, we did. That was hilarious. Yeah. I couldn't quite believe it. I thought it was almost set up when it I first saw so it. so weird. So basically what had happened is I just got a photo through from my husband, Dave, saying that our daughter had just chosen yeah. her birthday present, which yeah. was a coat, and it was a Kath Kidston coat, wasn't yeah. it? And I said to Dominica, oh, so did you design this? And she's like, well, actually, my team did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was our new kind of tween collection that we just launched, so it was crazy to see it like that. It was so such amazing. a yeah. yeah was she brilliant. loves that jacket, so oh, thank I'm you glad. for designing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Love that. How rewarding is it to think that your team are creating things that people are wearing and enjoying? It is quite an amazing feeling. I, it's quite odd because in a way you feel quite detached from everything until, for example, I'm on the bus in London and I see a little girl wearing a backpack that oh. my colleague did or that I potentially drew or you know you're you're on the tube and you see a woman with a backpack that originally the concept the idea for that came about two years ago sure. so it's quite it, I think that's when you really kind of feel it when you see it out in the public and people using it and wearing it wow. whereas before that I guess it is quite detached in a way yeah, yeah. it's just in the studio yeah. it's just yeah. it's drawing painting yeah having kind of creative meetings and developing all the the prints and the products wow so when we met you were talking about your journey and I know your journey from having a dream of becoming a designer something creative to where you are now hasn't been an easy road could you just talk about your story because it was so inspirational okay (laughs) so I grew up in Leicestershire and I did my A-levels at a college there and at the time, you know, when I was doing my A-levels I wasn't quite sure whether I wanted to be a creative or do something kind of, you know, I guess more practical, so to speak and get more of a, I guess, I thought, more of a grown-up job, so to speak and I did kind of biology, chemistry and English for my A-levels and I also did art and textiles just because they were kind of my passion so I obviously had to work at the other subjects but then when it came to doing the actual work for the creative subjects you know time would just fly by I'd sit there until the early hours doing the work and when the A-levels came through I'm, I did really obviously really well in the art and the textiles courses yeah and 
ended up giving myself another year in Leicester and did an art foundation course. So it's a course that you have to do in order to get a portfolio of work together if you want to apply for a creative course at university. So I did that. It was probably one of the best years I had because I spent the whole year not having to worry about, you know, maths or sciences or other subjects. And you just get to be creative. So you do a bit of graphic design, a bit of fashion, drawing, painting, wow, photography. Wow, sounds amazing. Yeah, so it's a year of that and ended up with, you know, a portfolio of work. Applied to the University of Brighton, which my tutor at the time, Debbie, who's you know super inspiring, I'm still in touch with her now. Wow. She kind of yeah, and she said, you know, go to Brighton. It's a brilliant course um, because I did actually have my heart set on London and applying to St Martin's, for example. But you can't really apply to two universities at kind of the top end because one will obviously reject you. You know, you apply to just the one that you want to go to. So she said, you know, you'll end up probably living and working in London. Go to Brighton, you'll have a student life, it'll be great. Um, wow. And I did, I did four years at Brighton, yeah. did a placement year there as well. It was part of the course, so the third year we worked in the industry. I did six months at Marks and Spencer's head office mm. here in London, then six months in New York. Came back, finished my degree, and started working, well, moved to London, straight, pretty much straight away, about a month later. And I didn't have a job, that was the only thing. At the time, lived in a room in a house in Peckham and I think I was paying £350 a month which was super cheap. It wasn't the best place to be living. My mum was quite afraid for me because, but luckily we were right behind the police station. Okay. Uh, it was quite dodgy back then. This was about 11 years ago mm. and I was on a three-month work placement at a company called Temperley. So there's Alice Temperley, who's the designer. I was working within the buying team and, and the fabrics team, and I obviously really enjoyed that, but I always kind of had my heart set on design. That placement finished. They offered me to stay, but obviously it'd be kind of in buying, and it wasn't what I was quite wanted to do. So the contact there, Roberta, she ended up giving me details to do a placement at a company called Liberty. So, you know, world-famous kind of Liberty art fabrics, and I started in turning there for and I think it was about three four months down the line mm -hmm. after being an intern and you know you're getting paid like I think it was eight pounds or nine pounds a day to cover your transport and your lunch and so it was tough it was really hard um, yeah. but after about four months they offered me kind of a full-time position as a junior designer there that so, is so amazing yeah and I stayed there for just under three years and then I think it was 2010 I got a phone call from a recruitment agency and they said you know, we've got this company that's looking for a designer. They're called Kath Kidston. Do you want to go for the interview? So, so were you headhunted then? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. So cool. Um, well, you know, I was offered an interview essentially. I wouldn't say headhunted yeah. and given the job straight away. I, I obviously interviewed, mm -hmm. but um, I thought I, at the time I was really happy at Liberty. I didn't want to leave, mm -hmm. but I hadn't really, I, I hadn't worked on my portfolio for about three years since I sure. got that job at Liberty. So I thought, right, it, if anything, I'll just like spec up my you know interview skills and have a portfolio to actually show. Yeah. So I ended up going and ended wow. up getting the job, and then that was. Over, just over eight years ago now and have kind of worked my way up within the company yeah. so now I manage the home and the kids design team so cool yeah. I love it that is such an inspirational story of how actually if you do want something bad enough it's really important that you work really Absolutely. hard for it and it might be that you yeah. get paid peanuts but actually yeah. in the long run you've got to look at the bigger yeah. picture haven't you and I really love that about your story that yeah. you pushed through <laughs> it was tough I mean it was tough at times when I was at university for the four years I worked a lot as a waitress mm. so I ended up being able to save up my student loan and wow. that is the only way that I was able to kind of support myself but uh -huh. I, the money was running out until I got a full-time job so it yeah. was tough so I spent probably about six months in London you know and all that kind of my student loan essentially I was using to pay for my rent and just kind of basics but sure um, but it was look tough. how wise you were I love that that you were uh, thinking ahead gosh, I don't know. and you knew that actually your big dream take planning and strategy yeah. and that's what your strategy yeah. was it was to work really hard build up the funds that you needed to then be able to, to leverage for the life that you now have yeah. you know I love that I've just been talking to somebody before you arrived I love the idea that every action has a consequence definitely absolutely. Um, it's either a positive consequence or a negative consequence but yeah. I love your story and how it's had this you know every small step every time you worked for free every time time you waited on tables there was 
the end goal in yeah. mind. I, I didn't know that at the time. I mean, when I was a waitress at university, the, the reason I was doing that is because I just quite liked to kind of keep active, keep doing stuff. And because I was working, I wasn't necessarily spending money. So, yeah. Um, and it meant that I could, you know, go on holidays and things when I was a student. So it was, that was actually more uh, why I did, did that. Um, yeah. I wasn't necessarily thinking about what was going to happen when I graduated. Strategically and, planning. No, I wasn't. But I, I think wasn't. what we can I learn wasn't. from it, though, is that, you know, that was a really good way of mm-hmm. starting small and yeah. growing into the person yeah. that you are now today. Successful, living in London, working yeah. for a great company. <laughs> you know, it's just so inspiring. And I hope that Thank people you. listening can be inspired by that. Okay, so when I met you last time, we got on really well and we were talking about mm-hmm. self-care and looking mm-hmm. after ourselves and how important that is yes. for our mental health. You had some amazing book recommendations, you had some really great top tips. So could you just talk us through maybe even a day in the life of you? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> the Monday to Friday are very different um, I kind of to, wanna to know, weekends. I want to know how you manage your demanding career busy lifestyle Mm -hmm. but how you manage to stay mentally okay what are the principles what are the things what are the small steps you take each day in order to be in control Um, so this isn't something that's kind of come easily to me it's actually I'm I just turned 35 actually so it's only really since I turned 30 probably in the last five years that this is something I've been more focused on because for the first five six years I lived in London you know I was still kind of going out a lot you know living that kind of London lifestyle whereas now getting a good night's sleep is pretty high on my agenda just because I can't function at work the next day if I don't so you know kind of simple things like that but I guess over the years and I didn't really think about it much until I met you a few weeks ago when you were talking about kind of self-care and what that means for everybody and how you know tips and things that you can do to help so kind of got me thinking that I actually probably do have quite a few things in place in my current lifestyle to yeah help me along Mm. on a day-to-day basis and I mean one of the main things is I'm quite an active person so I cycle to work most days do you yeah that's amazing yeah I'd be terrified in London. The thing is, though, that you see, what happened was when I first moved to London, I was always very active. I used to walk everywhere, whereas, you know, you move to London, you can't walk to work. It's, you know, it's an hour on the train. It's a bit of a commute. So I got myself a bike from Gumtree at the time and decided that I was going to do London to Brighton in the summer, when the summer finally came. So I moved out of Beckham and then moved to Greenwich. And I would then cycle kind of around the park and didn't realise at the time that the bike was so old and so rough that the gear pads were actually rubbing on the wheels. So I was having to work extra hard. But that meant that I, my fitness was actually probably all right by the time I did the London yeah. to Brighton. Yeah, I started cycling very kind of, you know, this was over 10 years ago, very gradually. And so now I'm kind of, well, I'd like to think I know what I'm doing, but I have had a few near misses. So as, as any London cyclist will probably tell you. But anyway, apart from that, I think one of the main things that I've really started doing is mindfulness. Yeah, And great. using the Headspace app. So that is a big one. Mm. That especially last four years. Yeah, wow. And that's Could made you a big difference. Talk to the listeners about what mindfulness is in your experience and how it helps you. Mm-hmm. So I have always been, and I still am in many ways, someone that's thinking about the next thing, and I always quite find it, yeah, very futuristic, I find it very difficult to calm my mind down and appreciate the given moment. Mm. I've always found that incredibly difficult. And my sister, on the other hand, is absolutely brilliant at it, and my family have always told me to kind of slow down, and, you know, I'm the kind of person, we sit down, we have coffee, order a piece of cake, and I'll finish mine, and then I'll be like, right, let's go, and they'll be like, no, we just want to sit here. <laughs> yeah. So it's, what mindfulness is, it's an app that I use it's called Headspace and I tend to do it in the mornings or well all the evening so it's just after waking up or just before bed mm-hmm. I'll only do it for if I'm very busy five minutes a day wow. or yeah. 15 minutes 20 Small minutes if I can yeah. if I have more time and there's different packages that you can pick there is a free version as well that you can download mm-hmm. it's about breathing it's about just trying to be in the moment in the breath mm. and afterwards I feel incredibly refreshed and a lot calmer, more optimistic. It's something that I think has become quite popular over the last few years, and especially this app is quite a quite a common one, so I would definitely recommend it. And it, on a day, it does 
absolutely help to calm everything down, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Just take a breath and take yes. in your stride rather than always rushing yeah. your head to the next thing. So good. I love an app called Relax Plus by Andrew okay. Johnson. Okay. That's a free app as well. I really enjoy checking it out. Yeah, I usually do it before bed actually, most yeah. days, especially if I've got a lot on. It's quite find, calming, isn't it? Really it relaxes calming. your I mind. Always fall asleep. And that, that, which, yeah. You know, I just think it's really good at the end of a day to yeah. really stop take a moment and breathe yeah. before heading into <laughs> dream world so yeah i'll put a link in the description box below for both those apps because they're both yeah. helpful mm-hmm. and useful season two of eavesdrop is kindly sponsored by mediconf mediconf promote excellence in health education throughout the uk for more information on mediconf go to mediconf.co.uk please find the links in the description box below Anything else that you do? Tell us. What else? Um, one of the things I've started doing, actually, in the past maybe year and a half, two years, is I live in East London, in a place called Dalston, and there's a Lido near me. It's an open-air wow. Lido, so it's a yes. swimming pool, 50-metre Olympic-sized pool, and it's heated, so you can go all year round. Mm. And I've actually started to get up pretty early in the mornings and go once a week. Wow. Some Saturdays, actually, tomorrow I'm planning on going. I'll get up at 5.30 in the morning. They open at 6.30, and just go for a swim for about an hour probably hour and a half or so and I find that incredibly relaxing I do not do front crawl just FYI I do I do breaststroke and it takes me ages I tend to do kind of 50 lengths but for me it's not about the speed because I do a lot of cycling and running etc it's about just calming my mind down and I find it incredibly relaxing and quite refreshing wow you're amazing I don't I I don't know about that love that what determination though um, like you know so many people have the excuse of you know there's no time in the day mm. and I can't I can't do it I can't get there and what you're saying is well it's 5 30 in the morning it's Saturday mm. I don't have to go to work no. so I'm going to choose no. to focus my attention on this instead yeah. but and bearing in mind that. bearing in mind I do if, if I'm obviously out until quite late on the Friday I probably won't do that or I'll have like a power nap on the Saturday in the afternoon so mm-hmm. I tried to plan it like that the other thing that I was actually going to mention is the getting up in the morning the, that early but obviously I've usually I try and get eight hours sleep that's what my body needs probably about seven and a half mm-hmm. but um, that's another thing that I've kind of looked into and read a little bit about there's actually a book called um, Morning How to Make Time by Alan Jenkins Ooh, and um, okay. he's a writer for The Observer a food writer but then this book is something slightly different and it's only I think, I think he only released it about nine months ago or so oh, check that out I've not heard of that yeah, one yeah yeah and it just kind of describes He's a, a, he's a morning person. Just to put things in, into context, I am not a morning person. I never was up until I had to, you know, start getting up early for work. So I get up at six o'clock every morning now. So the extra half an hour isn't really much for me, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I found there's kind of like a stillness and a peace when you get up that early in the morning. But I find really relaxing, quite calming. And I tend to start my day kind of in a really positive way. I don't have to rush. I have breakfast at home. I have two cups of tea, shower, etc., and get ready without rushing. Mm-hmm. I w- would hate to have to rush in the mornings and then start my day like that. I think that would yeah. almost set the tone for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So I really enjoyed those kind of like, you know, that first half an hour, hour yeah. of being up in the morning. It's like um, a grandma, but... No, you don't. I've been recently reading a book called The Miracle Morning. Okay. by a guy called Hal Elrod nice. and I'll put description links below but Hal Elrod talks about the miracle morning and how personal development yes. first thing is real key yeah. to having a good day yeah. and so he talks about this he, he labels them the savers S-A-V-E-R-S Okay. so S is scribing so writing down what you're grateful for yeah A is affirmations, so writing down your daily affirmations, like what do you want to say about yourself today, what's positive. V is visualisation, so visualising yourself having a really amazing day or if you've got anything specific on that you're doing, visualising that being a success. So if you've got a a meeting or a presentation, you would visualise the presentation and the meeting. and Going really well. Going really well, people clapping and enjoying it and thanking you afterwards, shaking your hand. So you're visualising that. And then E is exercise. Yes. So you're doing some kind yeah. of exercise. Yeah, that's so important. R yeah. is reading. So reading something, whether that's, for me, 
it can be the Bible, but for others it can be even quotes on mm. Pinterest. I, I actually find myself on Instagram reading kind quote, of positive quote quotes. of the day, uh, yes, that absolutely. sort of thing. And S is silence. Oh, yeah. So having that, yeah. and that's what you were just talking about, having mm. that moment before everybody yeah. else goes yeah. crazy uh, around you, having that yeah. silence and that, that place to breathe. Absolutely. So he talks about having sort of 10 minutes of each thing every morning. Okay. So you've got that full hour of 10 minutes slots. But some people do like the exercise for 20 minutes or sure. they'll do like three in one morning and then three the next morning and mix it up so you're not constantly doing the same. Yeah. But he says you can do it in six minutes, so you can do everything for one minute. So you can oh, wow. scribe for a minute, quickly write down what you're grateful for, you can do your affirmations for a minute, you can visualise for a minute, you can exercise for a minute of jumping yeah. jacks, sit-ups, whatever, read on Instagram for yeah. a minute, yeah. and be silent for a minute. So he's like, there's no excuse, actually. Yeah. You could fit yeah. this in at any point, but if you've got that hour, then obviously, yeah. you know, that's great. But what he's found is a Miracle Morning community on Facebook... And I have to join. You Sounds great. definitely should join it. You'd love it. And people are finding that they actually need to get up half an hour earlier still because they want to fit okay. more in. Nice. Because they're just Brilliant. like, this is yeah. so good for me. Yeah, yeah. that's so, what happened to me. I was always up at six for work, naturally started waking up at that time at the weekend and then realised I could, yeah, kind yeah. of make, you know, and, and enjoying it. I think mm. that's the bit that was key. So then I kind of built a way of kind of living, you know, my, my mornings in a certain way, especially starting that weekend yeah. and going to swimming, etc. So good. And as well, I think we can label ourselves and be like, I'm not a morning person. There'll be people yeah. out there listening yeah. to this conversation and be like, well, I'm not a morning person. It doesn't yeah. apply to me. And I do think there are night owls and larks. Mm. There's people that want to be up all night. Yeah. There's people that want to be up with the lark. Mm. But actually, I think you can train yourself either oh. way. It's just a decision that you have to so make. I absolutely agree. Like I said before, when I was doing my A-levels, I lived at home, you know, with my parents, my sister, and all the work I would do, I would do in my bedroom, and I would paint, draw, sketch, etc., up until the early hours, and I'm talking four o'clock in the morning. Wow. I was an evening, I was a nighttime person, evening person, and I would not, at weekends, I would sleep in as a teenager, as a, you know, and a young adult, still just before I was going off to university, I would sleep in till 1, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That that was what my life was like up yeah. until I went to uni. Yeah. And now I get up at 5.30 in the morning on a Saturday morning. Go for a swim. Yeah. Yeah. So believe me, when people say that, I think some people just, I don't know if it's an excuse sometimes or if it's just a label that they've kind of kept uh, just and telling you can themselves. Like that. Yeah. It's quite comforting, yeah. isn't it? Well, it I'm is. just a night owl or I'm exactly. just a lark or whatever. Exactly. So I think, yeah anyone who's listening who is questioning this conversation yeah. I guess yeah. it's worth giving it a try and experimenting yeah. for yourself mm-hmm. and just seeing mm-hmm. I think there are definitely lifestyles like shift workers mm-hmm. who would struggle absolutely I think you're in a really good yeah. position because you're in a mm-hmm. full time yeah. sort of role yeah. that's very routine yes it is whereas you know musicians are, mm-hmm. you know people who are out late or doctors nurses yeah. that's it is a little bit tricky but what Hal Elrod says is as long as whatever the time you're waking up you just wake up an hour earlier of that time so if it is that you're a 2 p.m waker upper why not try waking mm. up at one yeah and fitting all those things in i think also what might be quite this is again purely accidental the way that i think i got into this is because for my job i have to travel to china um, and to india quite a bit for work so actually coming back because of the time zones you end up with quite bad jet lag where you're tired very early so you come back to london and you know you want you want to go to bed early but then you end up waking up at three four o'clock in the morning so i've been kind of traveling for about seven years now like this and the jet lag was probably one of the first things that made me wake up that early in the right. morning yeah so i come back on a friday come i have to go to bed at eight o'clock and then i'd be up from four in the morning i was like what is going on and i have to find stuff to do sure because i literally could not sleep mm. and that's i think how just over got the into years, the routine yeah, of it that, that that's how yeah. it's kind of happened as well. Yeah, it's really good. I have done that as well off the back of travelling. I've yeah. been like, oh, I know that tomorrow I'm going to be yeah. up. That's a good so opportunity to try really something like this if you are jet-lagged. Mm, yeah, for sure. 
really good. Any other things that you do? I'm so interested in finding Gosh, out. Gosh, any things that I do in terms of kind of self-care? Self-care, yeah. Self-care. So, yeah, well, after my swim tomorrow morning, I'll be going off to local farmer's market. That's kind of another nice. big thing. I'm, the, I think the older I get, the more I am against all that plastic and those supermarkets and just the quality of food and the, the prices people are paid for that food, you know, and all these perfect vegetables. Uh, whereas I have a really good local farmer's market near where I live and I make sure every time I'm in London I pretty much go every Saturday morning wow. get kind of my fruit my veg eggs meat bread from there and you'd be surprised it's not that much more expensive than the supermarket and it's all organic you know kind of free it's range amazing. really good quality stuff so that's kind of another one I feel like I'm supporting the community as well so um, you're giving back yeah. not just getting yeah, yeah. Mm, I, I love think, that I, oh absolutely and um, you can you can volunteer at farmers markets I have a few friends that do that so that's you know another thing you could do kind of you know just two hours at your Saturday morning or afternoon um, I haven't done it yet it's on my list um, so that's kind of another big thing it's brilliant um, but I think maybe the, the biggest thing that I have since living kind of this lifestyle in London being here for 11 years now the main thing is being outside for me trekking hiking about a month ago I got back from India I was there in Ladakh in the north for two weeks and for for nine days and eight nights we were we were camping for eight nights in tents kind of in the middle of nowhere in the Himalayas and kind of the the main goal of this trip was to summit a mountain called Stock Kangri so it's over 6,000 meters tall whereas you know Everest is 8,848 I believe so it's not not too far off but over the years I've built up to kind of treks like this but for me being outside with nature sleeping in this tent it's hard it's tough podcasts got me through it books got me through it but it's so rewarding wow um, you know we'd be washing what a life in, story in, you know to be able to say that you've done these experiences yeah I've slowly built up because this one wasn't a particularly hard one but had I not got a really horrendous gastric infection as well it was awful it was really bad then it would have been a little bit easier but still the altitude made it quite hard but over the years I've been going away for you know even long weekends in the Peak District and Mm -hmm. camping not because you know I don't want to stay in a bed and breakfast but because I really love being outside in nature yeah so you're being intentional as well about that yeah absolutely so good yeah and there's you know so many things there's so many companies that do these kind of treks intrepid travel for example and exodus and they're the ones that I've used in the past and I've gone on my own as well on a lot of these trips so I've met some amazing people that are friends now you know yeah yeah and um, And that's another way of self-caring isn't it yeah get out out of your circle of friends meet some different people that's been key outside of your comfort zone rather than being safe all the time and sticking with yes it's great to have people that you can be honest with that you've journeyed life with that you've known since you're a child so important but also to making new friendships challenging yourself in that way and yeah like you say stepping out of your comfort zone I've got some wonderful friends from school and university and you know I've known them for over 20 years now and we've had a fantastic time and I see them all the time and a lot of them still live here in London which is great but not many of them want to go and uh, hike up Ben Nevis in February with crampons and an ice axe so yeah, yeah so and I've through doing these trips and going off on my own because you know there's a lot of singles um, out there doing this kind of stuff you meet so many people with you know common shared interests and then you of end course. up going off on kind of more adventures so I absolutely yeah I love doing that that's kind of a really really big kind of passion that I've had especially for the last five six years how do you find the confidence to do that like when you were doing that for the very first time on a trip yeah I went to Nepal um, on my own for yeah for for two weeks so that was the first one that was about five years ago did you find that hard or easy or what was Um, what what tips could you maybe give to someone out there who's like I wish I had the confidence to do that I think don't necessarily just buy a plane ticket and (laughs) not book any accommodation or anything when you get there look at a company like Exodus Travel like Intrepid Travel G Adventures and book a trip with them because pretty much as soon as you land from at the airport they'll pick you up and you you know you do, looked you do after, the trip yeah absolutely you know that you've got that boundary yeah. of safety absolutely yeah. especially if you're female I think maybe if you book with a company like that, an adventure company that's a really really good way to Trusted get you started and, yeah. and tried and tested absolutely Perfect. and don't worry about not 
I, some of the best trips I've had have been the ones that I've gone on my own and I've come back knowing some amazing people and keeping in touch with them yeah. and um, oh, meeting you're up making again, me want to so. go and book something it's, right now it's brilliant honestly <laughs> so cool yeah, it's, it's great well done you I love this so we are kind of getting to the end of our time but you've given us so many like tips and tools and gems of wisdom that we can kind of hold on to is there anything else that you want to say maybe just going back to it's just a book recommendation oh great yeah because this I think this book pretty much helped me get my first job here in London no way Um, go on what is it well it's called Creative Visualisation by Shakti Gawain Uh and I just moved to London and was evening it was this is over 11 years ago it was on the tube was getting the evening standard and working for free and in the back there was an interview with Natalie Massonette who set up net porter her book of choice was this so I went straight to Waterstones and bought it and started reading it and it's very much you know this is the kind of book I still have my first copy it's uh, quite disheveled now (laughs) full of notes etc but it's about having a positive mindset and visualizing things before you have them Uh, there's lots of kind of steps and exercises that you know the author talks you through step by step in the book yeah but I honestly feel as though I wouldn't have got my first job here in London if I if it were not for this book and doing the practices daily wow Um, I would yeah thoroughly recommend it yeah and I've got that I've gone back to it you know whenever I've needed to to year after year so well, I will definitely be checking that out myself Please and I'll do. put a link in the description box below for Great. anyone else that wants to check it out thank you for Brilliant. sharing thank you so much thank I'm sure that the listeners have found this so helpful and is there a place that we can find you online if we want to connect further or follow um, you if you've got you like know, an maybe Instagram or... I do have an Instagram yes Could we... Instagram's probably the best one yeah yeah absolutely Instagram would be the best one you can yeah, follow me on there there's mainly pictures of not me at all but, <laughs> but pictures of my travels and things that I, wow, I mean I'm, I'm a creative so yeah. it's all kind of beautiful. things that I find beautiful yeah so good good well I'll put a link yeah. to your Instagram below as well Dominique right. thank you so much for today thank no you for problem. meeting with me thank you for having me and I look forward so to much. hanging out again soon yeah thank you yeah. Lily Jo On the podcast, we cover a range of sensitive topics and perspectives. Some of the points raised in this episode you may strongly agree with or strongly disagree with. I want to know who you are and what you think. Last season we had so many downloads, but we don't know who you are. I want to get to know you. I really want to hear your thoughts and continue the conversation. And that's why I've created a brand new Facebook group. You can find the link to the group in the podcast description or you can search for Lily Jo Presents Eavesdrop on Facebook. On joining the group, we would like you to fill out a very short questionnaire and in return, you will be entered into our competition for a chance to win some Lily Jo merchandise plus a day in the studio with us as we record season three of Eavesdrop. The winner will be announced on Friday the 22nd of March, so don't miss out on this opportunity to connect in this way. I am so excited to get to know you. I will see you in the group. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please be sure to subscribe, and if you're feeling generous, why not share with your friends? Please check the description box below for extra links and further information to some of the topics discussed in today's episode. Also, you'll find information about what's coming next. For further information, top tips and advice on all kinds of mental health issues, including low mood, anxiety, self-harm, eating disorders and more, please do check out www.thelilyjoeproject.com. You can find my music across all digital platforms, including Spotify and iTunes. See you next time. Throughout 2019 and 2020, I will be touring high schools across the UK and Europe with my Let's Talk About Mental Health interactive and fun workshop. 75% of those with a mental health condition start developing it before the age of 18. That's why I believe it's so important to let young people know what to do if they are struggling with a mental health condition and how to maintain good mental health. 
if you would like me to lead this workshop at your school, please do get in touch. Email us, admin at thelilyjoeproject.com or why not check out our schools pack, which is www.thelilyjoeproject.com forward slash schools. We can't wait to meet you. Are you feeling stuck? Do you need a little help to get your life back on track? Do you have big dreams but don't know where to start? Why not book a session with me where we can explore together your dreams and turn them into a reality? I offer life coaching to individuals through my unstoppable life coaching business. Why not find a link in the description box below and book today? And don't forget to use the unique discount code eavesdrop for an extra 10% off. Are you looking for an interactive workshop on how to overcome low self-esteem for your next festival, youth event or schools workshop? Why not book me, Lily Jo, to lead my brand new I Am Worthy workshop where I teach best practices on how to overcome low self-esteem. This workshop is not just for girls, but it's for your guys as well. Find a link in the description box below to book today and don't forget to use the unique discount code eavesdrop for 10% off.